situations. Viewer discretion is advised. In 1997, a shy and pretty 18-year-old high school student hides her unintended pregnancy from her family, friends, and boyfriend. So the girl learns she's pregnant, uh, and this is a horror for her, and the first response is to deny it. While attending her long-awaited senior prom, she delivers her baby in a public bathroom. Imagine a young, frightened girl giving birth alone. It's just a horrible situation. It's a recipe for a disaster. She then commits an unimaginable crime, disposing of her newborn in the most horrific and cold-blooded of ways. Then she rejoins her friends. I think if someone was fully aware that they just had a catastrophic event happen in their life, they would not come out and do business as usual at the prom. But a shocking discovery is made. Inside, they found a bloody fetus. And soon, the news of the bizarre tragedy becomes the focus of nationwide outrage. The case got an incredible amount of publicity, both locally and internationally. Some media outlets dubbed her the prom mom, and that name stuck. Everyone wants to know, was the baby born alive? And how could she throw away her newborn like garbage? I'm convinced that she had no clue of what was going on. She just blocked it out of her mind, and then all of a sudden it happened, and she panicked. Meet Melissa Drexler, a.k.a. the prom mom. Just another girl next door on the Jersey Shore, until murder made her famous. In the late 1990s, Melissa Drexler's case became jaw-dropping media fodder. The New York Times called Melissa's life, quote, a picture of ordinary, until she became the focus of an agonizing mystery. The story of a teen who dumped her newborn in the trash enraged Americans, sparking round-the-clock cable news coverage. How could you do that? And then get up and walk away? I think there should be no mercy. No. This story shocked everybody who heard it. While the case was going on and afterwards, I received calls and uh, correspondence from people as far away as Japan, Germany, I remember, all over Europe, probably South America. It got an incredible amount of publicity. For days, the local news coverage went on and on and on hourly. And the New York Post newspaper labeled Melissa killer prom mom. Known for controversy, the television series Family Guy parodied Drexler's situation with the musical number Prom Night Dumpster Baby. And the case inspired a Nickelback song, Throw Yourself Away. While some labeled her a murderer who showed no remorse, many people tried to understand Drexler's mental state. It's a horrifying experience with no preparation, and we get a horrific outcome uh, all around for everybody. In order to understand the depth of this shocking case, we first have to look at the life of Melissa Drexler before she killed her son. Melissa Drexler grows up in the Forked River section of Lacey Township, New Jersey, just minutes from Jersey Shore beaches and just over an hour outside of New York City. A Catholic family, the Drexlers attend mass and blend into their suburban community. Melissa is the only child of a pretty religious family. In high school, Melissa loved to draw, and she was really interested in fashion design. Okay, so next week we'll start our sessions with a career counselor. She just wants to check in with you and see where you're at with your college applications. Rebecca, what about you? What do you want to do after you graduate? I already got a job. I'm going to be a vet tech at my uncle's clinic. Ah, that sounds practical and fun. <laughs> Melissa! What about you? Melissa? New York. I want to go to New York and work in fashion. Maybe be a designer. Huh. OK. Melissa and her closest friend, Rebecca, often hang out after school. In the 10th grade, Melissa met John Lewis, a boy who was two years older 
Like Melissa, John is a local from a neighboring township. Mom! Rebecca, get your feet off the table. Hey, John. Hi. Here's your groceries. Oh, thank you. Think you can stay for dinner? I really should get home. Uh, Rebecca, get your feet off the couch and say hello to John. Hey, Johnny boy. Do you know Melissa Drexler? She's in my English class at school. We've known each other for, like, ever. No, goofball. I don't hang out with high school kids since I, like, graduated. According to friends, it really wasn't love at first sight. But John and Melissa sure liked each other. You're home early? Who's your friend? Nobody. I mean, John drove me home. John? It's me. Nice to meet you too, Mr. Drexler. I, uh, well, I gotta, I gotta go to work. I'll see you later, Melissa. Bye. Soon, Melissa and John begin dating. And although she is allegedly inexperienced, the two sneak away for sex before John starts his night shifts at a local store. <sighs> is that all right? I didn't know it was going to hurt. It should only hurt for a minute. Yeah, I think you're right. Is that better? Yeah. Good. <sighs> Little do they know, that their secret sexual liaisons will end in a very sinister and public way. Children take risks, teenagers take even more. Of why they think they're invincible, they think they're immortal, they think they're infallible. Time for kids is forever. They, they don't have a sense of how long things are going to be. They live for that moment. So the idea of having sex is, well, it feels good and it feels good now. Allegedly, Melissa's parents are blissfully unaware of their daughter's active sex life. I'm home! Around this time, Amy Grossberg, another teenage girl in New Jersey, is in the news. Grossberg hides her pregnancy, and after giving birth, she and her boyfriend, Brian Peterson, reportedly kill their baby and leave it in a dumpster in Delaware. Oh, that poor baby. It's horrible. This will eerily parallel Melissa's future actions. I wonder what her parents are like. In the early spring of 1997, John, Melissa, and her best friend, Rebecca, begin to talk about senior prom. I can't wait to go to prom. It's gonna be amazing. I know, I cannot wait. Did you hear the theme is a night to remember? Personally, I thought cotton candy was a better theme. Hmm. Stupid. You know, everyone would literally be dressed in pink. Okay. Gross. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to the dance with her? No. Why would I go back to high school for some stupid dance? Because it's a night to remember. They would break up quite often, but friends said they always kind of got back together within a day or two. Hey, sorry for being so insensitive about the dance. I probably won't want to do kid stuff after I graduate either. Look, if it makes you happy, I'd love to be your date to prom. Really? Yeah. It'll be like a do-over for me. I guess cotton candy is a pretty stupid theme. <laughs> yeah, I mean, could you imagine me in a pink tux? <laughs> I'm sorry. According to friends, Melissa loved John, and John loved Melissa. But they didn't talk about marriage. They were looking forward to life after she graduated from high school. 
But what happens in their immediate future will change everything when an unwanted pregnancy gets in Melissa's way. It's 1997, and New Jersey high school student Melissa Drexler is dating John Lewis. According to friends, their relationship becomes sexual. Is this okay? Yeah. Mm. Being a teenager is, is taking risks and trying to figure out good decisions. And, you know, I like to say to my patients, if you have a little voice telling you it doesn't feel like the right thing to do, listen to that voice. After a while, Melissa makes a startling realization. Melissa allegedly realizes that her period is late and thinks that she could be pregnant. She begins what her defense lawyers will later call dissociating, where a person disconnects from feelings around what's really happening. This is a very serious um, mental, psychological issue for the woman. They're not insane, but there are so many other elements of panic, depression, um, and just not knowing what to do. Although hesitant, Melissa confesses her concerns to John. I need to tell you something. What is it? Um, I'm late. What? My period, it's late. What do you mean? I might be pregnant. How could you yeah, be pregnant? Aren't you on birth control? Like... So, um, I might be wrong. Maybe I counted wrong. I haven't given it enough time. Melissa reportedly told John about her pregnancy scare, but then she brushed it off as if it was nothing to worry about. Yeah, I'm sure it's just a mistake. <laughs> Man. You really scared me there for a moment. Like, you almost gave me a heart attack. What are you doing? <laughs> hey, let's go play Space and Raiders. Okay, I'll be there in a minute. I'm sure? Rest, yeah. Okay. So the girl learns she's pregnant, uh, and this is a horror for her, and the first response is to deny it. But if Melissa truly knows she's pregnant, why would she deny this to herself? No one likes feeling shamed, and we will do, as humans, almost anything to avoid being shamed. These girls have gotten a message, generally from their parents, sometimes from their society, their community uh, at large, that being pregnant or having a baby out of wedlock is just not acceptable. And to avoid the shame, to avoid that feeling, they then invoke the denial uh, defense mechanism to try to keep things okay. Some of them may cognitively know that they're pregnant, but again, they will take steps to ignore that or deny that because they just can't cope with it. They don't get any prenatal care. They don't go to the doctors. They find ways to not show that they're pregnant. We don't really know exactly what Melissa told her parents, but we do know that she did not tell them that she was pregnant. Honey? Melissa, you okay? Yes. I'm fine. Okay. Well, good night. I love you. Melissa's parents allegedly don't suspect that anything is wrong. Often I'm thinking, how did the mom not know? But I, I could see that getting hidden because the legs are looking thin and the face is looking thin and it's just in the belly. Best friend Rebecca is unaware of Melissa's condition. 
and reportedly doesn't notice any physical changes in her. Can I get a popcorn? Oh, you will never catch me popping out babies. You don't want kids? Oh, screw that. Kids totally wreck your body. You do? Maybe. <laughs> Rebecca later would say that Melissa didn't look pregnant at all. The Lacey Township High School Senior Prom is set for June 6, 1997. Best friend Rebecca and Melissa decide they're going to plan to try on prom dresses. Ooh. What do you think about this one? I really like it. Oh, my gosh. What do you think about this one? It's perfect. You're so lucky. Everything looks good on you. Let's go try them on. Mm, I don't know. Oh, come on. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In news reports, Rebecca told reporters that she didn't see any sign of Melissa's pregnancy. She just saw a little bit of normal weight gain. Too tight? I can get you a bigger size, honey. Do you want a size four? No. Strippers jammed. God, besides, I don't like the stress anyway. Is it going okay over there? I haven't heard from you in a minute, Melissa. Girl, you ought to see this dress. It is not good on me. Oh, got to get something way smaller. Melissa is able to keep her pregnancy hidden at home and school by wearing certain types of clothes. Any large sweatshirt or oversized sweater is going to cover that perfectly. And even something with a band on the bottom. No, I just skipped breakfast. That's all. <laughs> Ignore it. According to reports, no one actually suspects that Melissa is carrying a baby. Jeez, Melissa, you're getting fat or you're getting pregnant? Probably pregnant. Uh, rude. Even Melissa herself seems to be in a state of denial. I have been in a number of cases where mothers have actually seen their daughters naked within a day or two of the delivery of the baby, and their own moms did not recognize that their daughters were in fact pregnant at that time. So it's easy enough to do. From court testimony, we know that John Lewis had no idea that his girlfriend was pregnant. Life takes a dark, twisted turn for Melissa and John on Friday, the 6th of June. Prom night. John, come on in. Melissa's upstairs getting ready. She'll be down in a minute, but let me take a look at you. You are quite the sight. You're so grown up and handsome. Isn't he grown up and handsome? Now, I, I heard you didn't go to your first prom. That's correct. Well. I'm glad that you're able to go tonight because prom was the best night of my life. I loved it. Wow. Oh, honey, you look so beautiful. Oh, let me get out of the way. I'm sorry. 
John picks Melissa up at her house. She's wearing a sleeveless black dress and has her hair in an updo, and no one notices anything unusual about her shape. Okay, you two get together. All right, one, two, three, prom! Prom. Um, okay. Okay, you two have so much fun, okay? Shortly after Melissa leaves for prom, the pregnancy she's denied will become all too real for her. And what she does next will brand her as a killer forever. This program contains graphic violence and sexual situations. Viewer discretion is advised. In 1997, New Jersey teenager Melissa Drexler hides her pregnancy from her parents, boyfriend, and high school friends. Now, she is on her way to her high school's senior prom, and Melissa is in active labor. There was what we call a dissociative disorder, that uh, young ladies that go through this process disassociate themselves with, from reality and don't believe that there's going to be a birth. So who's chaperoning tonight? Oh, Mr. Harris. Sorry, John. Oh, man. I hope you brought his crystal ball so I could get my future prediction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're living it, though. This is the future, John. Yeah, I guess that's true, huh? For a young girl to think that they could go through this on their own is not a realistic thought whatsoever with the pain and the emotional, physical changes to your body, it, it's too much. And I think the, the access to delivery in a hospital and or medical care is needed 100%. Are you okay, baby? Yeah. All right, Bye. good, good. Melissa was really close to giving birth at this point. She was in labor and her water had broken, but her friends had no idea what she was going through. Lacey Township High School holds its senior prom in a banquet hall more than 45 miles from the school's campus. It's a long drive to Aberdeen, New Jersey from Melissa's home, and she's never given an interview about that night. So we can only guess what must have been going through her mind. Melissa arrives at the prom and immediately heads to the restroom. Tommy. 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 Oh, no, you're crazy. He's amazing. I love John waits for Melissa to join him, unaware that she's in the bathroom, about to give birth to their child. Melissa's boyfriend, John Lewis, would later testify that he had no idea that she had gone into labor. He didn't even know she was pregnant. At the prom, Rebecca later would say that Melissa didn't look pregnant at all, and many of the other girls said the same thing. Other girls were coming and going, maybe adjusting their flowers or their, their clothing, and they noticed certain things that were odd. Prom guests later attest to hearing strange sounds coming from one of the stalls. One student later tells Newsweek she thought the sounds were of a couple having sex. Are you in here? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you sure? You've been gone a while. Yes, I'll be out in a second. All right, see you in a minute. A young woman, first of all, unmarried, makes no plans, nothing. It's, it's like, this isn't even happening to me. 
I'm not even I'm not pregnant. I don't know I don't know anything about this. And all of a sudden, nature takes its course, and especially in Melissa's case. She never told the the boy, the the boy as I understand it in his statement, we have no reason to, to disagree, is that he thought she was putting on a little weight, perhaps, but she never said anything and he just, I didn't notice anything. All of a sudden, here we go. She'll be out in a minute. She's just fixing her makeup. Melissa Drexler has been gone from her friends at the prom for a significant amount of time. And now they are growing concerned. People didn't know that Melissa was in the final stage of labor. And then she began pushing. <laughs> Alone in the stall, Melissa attempts to give birth to her baby. <laughs> Giving birth alone, it's extremely painful. There can be significant blood loss, hormone changes, fluid shifting and chemical changes that can affect her physically as well as mentally and emotionally. Other young women reportedly see blood dripping on the floor while Melissa is in the stall. It's just a horrible situation. It's a recipe for a disaster, and it is a disaster. Meanwhile, out on the dance floor, students are oblivious to the horror unfolding in the girls' bathroom. <laughs> No one really can imagine what it's like to be that girl, alone, frightened, bleeding, scared, afraid that she's brought shame and disgrace to herself, to her family, and now has this thing coming out of her that she doesn't want, doesn't understand. After nearly half an hour, Melissa gives birth to a baby boy weighing just over six pounds. What do I do? Melissa cuts the umbilical cord using the sharp edges of a metal trash container in the stall. Experts have learned what goes through the mind of someone who dissociates. When they do give birth, there isn't a recognition that it's a living person. They think of it as a foreign body, something that isn't wanted, and so when it comes out, it's a relief, but then if it makes a noise, it's not a wanted noise. <laughs> Melissa then applies pressure to the neck of her newborn son. <laughs> it's sometimes seen as a, almost like you're giving birth to a tumor or something threatening. And when that occurs, usually the mother may attack, you know, and, and be, there's almost, an, there's quite a bit of aggression at something that caused such distress. Melissa then goes in search for something to clean up the blood in the stall, as well as something within which to hide the newborn's body. She settles for a plastic trash bag. <laughs> I'm convinced that she had no clue of what was going on. She just blocked it out of her mind, wasn't there. This is sort of not my problem. I mean, something's happening, but I'm not sure what's happening. And then all of a sudden it happened, and she panicked. Melissa stuffs her newborn in the trash, then heads back to join her friends as if nothing has happened. She straightened herself up as well as she could 
and she went out to the prom. Now that Melissa has regained her composure, will anyone find out about the atrocity that has just occurred? And will her baby boy survive? It's June 6th, 1997, and Melissa Drexler has just given birth to a baby boy in the bathroom at her senior prom. After throwing him away in the trash, Melissa joins her friends who believe she had just been feeling ill. Hey, hey, are you all right? Melissa, what's wrong? Hey, talk to me. What's going on? Babe. Melissa. Other students will report that Melissa seemed to be enjoying herself and appeared normal. I think if someone was fully aware that they just had a catastrophic event happen in their life, they would not come out and do business as usual at the prom. But I've seen people in dissociative states and they're almost like they're hypnotic and they're doing things, but they're not fully in control of what they're doing. They're in this altered state where, where they're not consciously thinking, planning, organizing, although they may appear to be on some limited level. They're not doing it with the full um, moral, conscious, ethical awareness that we have when we're fully alert. Meanwhile, students alert prom supervisors that there is blood in a restroom stall. A janitor is sent in with a mop. Blood is really an odd substance, uh, so it doesn't even require a lot of blood for the people to presume the, the amount is massive. If you take just a couple tablespoons of blood and spread it around, it will look to the average person like there's been a massacre. The janitorial staff notices that the trash bag feels too heavy to contain only paper towels, so they decide to check its contents. Inside, they find the tiny body of Melissa's newborn. Inside the banquet hall, Melissa enjoys a salad, reportedly carrying on as if nothing has happened. Man, babe, you were really out of there for a minute. I think someone probably spiked the punch. Oh, someone definitely <laughs> spiked the punch. All right, you want to go dance? Come on. Come on. Yeah. After the, the baby was disposed of, the young woman went out to dance. I, I think that's probably what, what bothered a lot of people later. How could she have walked back out onto the dance floor and just resumed her prom as if nothing had happened? She delivers the baby in the restroom where the prom is taking place uh, and then returns to the prom and dances with her boyfriend, requests a specific song. Hey, I'll be right back. Where is she going? I don't know. Melissa allegedly asked the DJ to play the song The Unforgiven by Metallica. Meanwhile, witnesses share information with prom supervisors about the source of the blood in the bathroom. Mostly young girls who were in the ladies' room. Every one of them immediately ID'd uh, Miss Drexler as the person that was using a particular stall they saw her foot going back and forth on the, on the floor. The stall was uh, a mess uh, with blood and afterbirth and things like that. Concerned about bleeding and unaware of the cause, a concerned supervisor checks on Melissa. Excuse me, excuse me. Dear, I need to speak with you. What's going on? Are you feeling okay? You left a pretty big mess in the bathroom. Sorry. I have a really heavy period. That's a baby. It's a baby in the trash. I think it's dead. <sighs> P. 
paramedics rushed in and they tried to revive the baby by performing CPR. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again. For nearly two hours, paramedics tried to revive Melissa Drexler's baby. The chances are almost zero for revival in these cases. If they've been strangled, suffocated, drowned, uh, the likelihood of recovery is pretty much zero. Melissa's newborn baby boy is dead. While Melissa is escorted to the hospital for treatment, her boyfriend John discovers the horrific news. Did you know your girlfriend was pregnant? <laughs> I think Melissa's been hiding a horrible, horrible secret from you. She she said she felt sick. That was, that was all. No, John. Uh, she had a baby tonight in the bathroom. Is Melissa okay? Is, is, is the baby okay? No. I, w I want to see Melissa. Where's Melissa? No, John. She's not here. She had to go to the hospital. While Melissa was being treated, authorities called her parents and they had no idea she was even pregnant. What? No, no, that's, um, that's, well, that's ridiculous. My daughter is not pregnant. You must have the wrong girl. My Melissa would not. Yes. Yes, we can go to the hospital to clear this up right now. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they think she's pregnant. What? How's that? How can that be? I, I don't know. Someone from the school said something about her and a baby at prom, and we have to go to the hospital to clear this up because it is ridiculous. Okay. As Melissa is released from the hospital, an autopsy is underway on her baby boy. They wanted to determine whether the baby was stillborn or whether there was a live birth and a death. Will the autopsy reveal that the baby was born deceased, or that he was alive, and that his mother murdered her newborn son? Melissa Drexler's baby is found dead in the trash at her senior prom. What everyone wants to know is, was he alive when he came into the world, making Melissa a cold-blooded killer? Authorities come to a conclusion. The autopsy shows that the baby was indeed born alive, strangled, and then suffocated. If the baby were alive, born alive, depending upon the, how the death was caused, then you have um, a, a criminal issue. A birth certificate was issued and a death certificate. If it had been a stillborn, there would have just been a death certificate. The Drexler family named the baby boy Christopher, and they had a private burial. When word got out that a baby had been born and killed at the prom, the other students were shocked and sad. Some of them even wore white ribbons to memorialize the baby. How are you are. In remembrance. How are you are. Some students are more callous, however. High school staff are presumably concerned about the negative attention the school is receiving. How could she conceal this from the boyfriend? From her own mother. Slow down. Some people are such good liars, they convince themselves. This is going to ruin our school. This is not who we are. On June 24th, 1997, 18 days after Melissa Drexler kills her baby, she is charged with murder. Well, the key thing in every criminal case is determining the criminal intent of the defendant. And if the state can prove criminal intent, uh, as a defense attorney, you got to figure out, can you keep your client out of jail? If you can't keep your client out of jail, how do you limit the client's exposure to jail? Melissa's attorneys argue before a judge that she didn't know what she was doing when she was giving birth. It was what we call a dissociative disorder, that uh, young ladies that go through this process 
disassociate themselves with, from reality and don't believe that there's going to be a birth. That, that was the psychological aspect of it. The mitigating factors here obviously were her age, the fact that she had no prior record, the fact that there was uh, a psychological defense all weighed in her favor against her was the fact that there was a dead baby. That's when Melissa Drexler became known as the prom mom, and the media attention kicked into high gear. Melissa is released from jail on a $50,000 bond. She returns home, where journalists are camped out in front of the family's house. There was no press conference, and there was no word from Melissa Drexler. I think that the media attention, which was over the top in a lot of ways, woke up a lot of people. More than a year after the death of her baby, Melissa Drexler agrees to a plea deal, aggravated manslaughter instead of murder, with a maximum sentence of 15 years. I knew I was pregnant. I concealed the pregnancy from everyone. I went to the prom, I went into the bathroom and delivered the baby. When Melissa read her statement in court, she was very quiet and barely audible. I then took trash bags and covered it around the baby and put the baby in a trash can. I was aware of what I was doing when I placed the baby in the trash. She was extraordinarily remorseful and uh, it was it did get a positive response from both the prosecutor and the judge. I recall the judge saying at the time that he had compassion for what happened here uh, that Ms. Drexler was not a monster. We still put her in jail. There had to be a punishment, I think. And um, I don't know how she feels about it, but uh, my conscience is clear on it. She got a 15-year sentence, which at the time was probably the harshest sentence that had been given out, certainly in decades in this country, for a neonaticide death. <laughs> In prison, Melissa takes fashion classes and continues to pursue her interest in design. Very good, very good. In November of 2001, Melissa is released from prison after serving only three years of her 15-year sentence. When Melissa was released from prison, she didn't give any media interviews, but her father was quoted as saying that she wanted to get on with her life. It's not surprising that she doesn't give interviews about this. This isn't anything that anybody wants to be famous for. 